Aloha, this is Rob Hack again with another edition of Exporting from Hawaii. Today I'm very excited to have my friend Tom Sirivata here uh, with his goldsmith assistant Hanai Matsuo and they're from Lahana Jewelry here in Honolulu on Bishop Street. They make customized jewelry and some uh, standard products that they do very well in the Japanese market. So we're here to talk to them about exporting their products to Japan and elsewhere. So welcome, aloha, thank aloha. you very much for being here. Um, we have some samples of your products here, but before we get into the samples, tell, tell the audience, Tom, how did you get started in the jewelry business? Uh, I guess uh, I started with my mom. Uh, we started at the stadium, a little stadium flea market when I was uh, doing high school. And uh, I have sent out most of my um, order to uh, private company to do it, but they keep doing um, the wrong thing that we asked for. So that's how I end up uh, telling myself, oh, I got to learn this trade and uh, this skill. So I actually went to school in uh, Kansas for firearm and gun engraving. And then I was in uh, San Francisco for jewelry making really? with, yeah, with Alan Rivera Academy. So. Uh, that's how I kind of start out how to make jewelry, how to uh, engrave. So it become my passion, you know, so uh, I was a high school teacher you know, for like about three years. And uh, I found the hobby become like a, something that I can stay all day and work all day and I don't feel like it's working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how I started it. And then uh, it goes from there. One of the things that uh, it shows in the products, because one of the things I love about your products is that it's clearly infused with Hawaii, and there's a lot of aloha behind this, and that's yes. that's obvious, right? Yes. But how do you design your products so that that comes across? First, I I, I try to uh, figure out what the trends are, and especially the shape. Shape is very important. I think every year or two years shape change you know from the heart from the round from the rectangle uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out like I would normally well do something and then I will test it out at a stadium uh, that is my indications of what customers are looking for and uh, certain styles certain technique uh, is it for women or is it for, for men you know uh, is this gonna be for gifts or is it for personal uh, items so uh, that help me to determine what kind of design I should make. So I kind of give them option, either they go with the traditional or they can go up to a modern you know, niche. So that's how I actually test out my market. When you say traditional, traditional would mean a traditional sort of Hawaiian bracelet? Hawaiian, yes. Uh -huh. Or just the engraving part. Uh, mm. When you go into the high end part that require a lot, then you have like a firearm engraving for something like this, right? So it's uh, require more work, more, uh, thinking about how you want the flow of the designs to be. Uh, for Hawaiian jewelry, uh, it's uh, a little bit more simpler because it's, it's actually have a pattern, but it repeats itself. Mm -hmm. So that's more traditional, you know, so people will normally buy for graduation, a birthday present. Yeah, so, so that's... It, I find it very interesting. You're doing a lot of market research by going to the stadium. Yes, And yes. just displaying the products and right. see what works and what doesn't. Right. And you're still doing that? Yeah, I'm still doing that. Yeah, and, and that's like a, a key to test out your market because you have variations of customer from tourists, from local, depending on what they want. So it, it's kind of help both, you know, so uh, you can see the low end, you can see the high end, people can afford it. So that you try to figure out which market you're gonna go with. So for me, I choose Japan because I ran into a friend of mine that actually uh, kind of tell me, "Hey, you should come to Japan because we have a lot of Hawaiian events going on." And that's how I started to kind of take that journey. So, but I want to stay on the topic for a second of uh, the tourists that are coming here, and you're doing market research with the tourists that are coming here. Well, Mm. Uh, do you find that there are a lot of Japanese tourists that are going to the stadium? Yes, there are. I mean, we have a bunch of people comes in, and we have uh, people that don't know about the you know, flea market. Mm. It might be the first time, and then they kind of 
Like, oh, surprise, these products is here. You know? I'm surprised yeah. because some of these products are, I mean, especially the very intricate ones, are, mm -hmm. these are not inexpensive mm -hmm. jewelry. It it's, can be somewhat high-end, and it's right. wonderful pieces. Mm -hmm. It's just not the kind of thing you'd expect to see at the right, market. Right. That's great. Right. Um, and most of your customers, do you find they're male or female? I would say both, like 50-50. Uh, uh, because I try to market, actually I try to market to the male's audience first because there's so many people uh, doing for female. So I'm trying to capture the male market and then the female is already there. I mean, my, my uh, piece that I make before is all female. So Ooh. I'm just trying to figure out how to get a male market. But all in all, both, I would say both. So are the males buying for themselves or is it mostly females buying from males actually male buy for themselves really yes that's good yes. and then they will buy the female products for their <laughs> wife what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why that's what i'm trying to aim at i think because i think everybody is else competing with the females market i mean 80 percent of the you know jewelry is meant to, you know meant to make for a female so i kind of like going the opposite so do you have um his and hers designs is yes we do we do yeah so we do and we have like males tend to be a little bit wider in millimeters uh, and the design itself uh you know you can go either or like with flower or without flower mm -hmm. and then uh, depending on how the f because i think female would dictate the design you know when they come in the couple will come in hey hon i want this you know then i have to make something that it's not manly or it's not femininely, mm -hmm. so it had to be like kind of in balance. So that's what I normally will tackle. My experience with your jewelry, it, the, the ones that I've seen, is there's a lot of silver. But when I look at your website, I also see gold. So yeah. which do you sell the most of? Uh, I think more silver. I think gold because the price point mm -hmm. is getting so high now. Uh, but the market here, I sell more silver, but in Japan, it's more gold. So, uh, That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, from a manufacturing standpoint, when you're hand making the jewelry, is there a difference between silver and gold? Or do you yes. Uh, gold is a little bit harder. Uh, silver is a little bit softer. Uh, but silver is harder to, uh, to deal with because it oxidizes. So if you don't have enough skills on those, then you can easily oxidize it and it tarnish it really quickly mm -hmm. so you don't get the bright cut the way you want it so uh, go you don't have to worry because the, the 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 heat doesn't really affect that much so but it's just the engraving part that is is tougher so uh, it would require knife after knife that you know sometimes you might be able to uh, get away with it in silver but you kind of get away with gold you're gonna snap the knife so a lot of your products or i would say the the majority that I've seen are rings, bracelets, earrings, here's some necklaces, mm -hmm. um, some charms or pendants mm -hmm. in the phone cases. Are, are there other things that I, I'm not aware of? Well, I actually travel as an artist. Uh, sometimes I go to a car show, I like engraving valve cover uh, or a gas cap, even a mod, you know, um, e-cigarette. So. Pretty much anything that come out from the street that they want me to do, I pretty much engrave anything from us. Yeah, yeah from lighter. The, yeah, zipper lighter. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I've seen a lot of buckle, yeah. Even uh, sometimes they, I have a customer come in like, hey, can you engrave, you know, a bottle of, <laughs> a bottle of, a, what is that called, salt and pepper. Really? So, yeah, so I just etching, you know, that kind of stuff. So what, is, kind of, what is this on your neck? Right oh, this is a pendant that I actually made. Uh, this is like a, Spearhead, yeah, yeah. So it's a like combinations of, uh, yeah, tapa design and uh, Hawaiian engraving. So, wow. I, I, when I looked at your website recently, I saw and I've I've seen other people wearing them. There's a whale tail, which is beautiful, right. Right. and some of the fish hooks of the Hawaiian design fish mm -hmm. hooks are gorgeous. So, are those selling well in Japan? Yeah, uh, the fish hooks selling really well. Uh, the whale tails too. Uh, I think the heart shape now. As of right now, I think the heart shape is taking off. 
Maybe because it's Valentine's Day. It's past Valentine's Day. So. <laughs> Probably. And um, the pineapple pendants. Right, right. And I showed my wife yeah. the plumeria. She liked the plumeria. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, the plumeria is always, you know, yeah. the top, the hot topic. Oh. But the fish hook right now is the in thing, I think, in Japan. I think because of, uh, because of the movie Moana. Moana comes out. Yeah, so. But I think Japan market is like a, it has to be a very special niche. Uh, Female, you know, wouldn't wear a fish hook. Right. But now I start seeing a lot of female wearing a fish hook because we make it a certain size, and not just for the pendant, but also for the earring as well. So yes, that's how I go. And also, I, I also do some, uh, like a bracelet too. Mm -hmm. Do you get many tourists visiting your shop? Uh, it's all by appointment. So we have a lot of oh. refer. Um, so most of them is all refer that comes up. So they normally will either tell us, oh, we're going to be here this day, this day, can, you know, that's how I normally do it. And um, tourists contact you. I know Hanai-san obviously mm -hmm. can speak Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, is it important for you to have Japanese staff on board yes. that can answer emails and take questions and this sort of thing? Uh, I would say yes, but most of my uh, contact to Japan is to Miho, yeah. he's in Yokohama. Uh, that's where all the contact is done. And then when they come here, uh, they normally will set up the time and the schedule for me to, to be there. And we, either they need something like for translation, then they might have to ask Hanai or you know, another worker that I have. Uh, but other than that, most of the Japanese people will actually speak English. You know, so that, uh, but if they don't, they, they normally will communicate with my uh, partner up in Japan. And then she will tell me, oh, what the customer is looking for, or what do they want. So, but of course, having a Japanese speaking person uh, with you is a plus. Yeah, that's a plus. Let's um, talk about your office in Japan. Uh, I've met Miho, you know, she's in mm -hmm. Yokohama. And you are, how long has that operation been going? Uh, we, just, we just start, I think in November, we have an office just to uh, get a return client comes in because I, I actually do an after service. So when a client buys something for me, uh, my guarantee was that I'd be uh, doing them after service for like twice a year. So I will fly up there in the office and actually cleaning or uh, polishing, you know, to to actually help keep the uh, jewelry to uh, you know to the quality that it's it's supposed to be met. Wow, so, that's incredible yeah. service. Yeah, so that's why we have all these return client and refer client comes in. So and every now and then we run like a family and a friend events so that they can come in and uh, bring their jewelry to be serviced or to be, you know, look at and see what, you know, if they're broken, maybe they, they don't have it from me, but they got it from somebody else. So that's my service to them that they have to, you know, uh, pay for it or something like that. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. I'm really glad to hear that. Uh, I think that the Japanese market, the Asian market in general, but particularly the Japanese market needs that extra after sales mm -hmm. service care mm -hmm. to draw the repeat customers. Right. They, um, they look more for the heart, the money, and the artists. They don't want cookie cutter. I think the Japanese market, they just want something that can touch the person behind the art. And I think that's what it is that Tom really articulated all his skills in art. That's a really yeah. good point because uh, mm -hmm. when, when we're consulting to the local companies here, mm -hmm. I find the companies that are doing the best with Japanese customers, mm -hmm. foreign customers in general, but very particularly the Japanese customers, the companies that do the best with them are the ones that are able to convey their story into the products mm -hmm. and the packaging and the after sales service and what have you. And um, I know you do a very, very good job of that, trying to get the aloha into the designs. But yes. then I think the customers really feel that from the product and from you personally. That's great. Now, um, your office in Yokohama, are you stocking inventory there? Yes, we have, uh, we have quite a bit of in inventory uh, there uh, as a live product, so they can actually purchase it if they want to. Uh, and then sometimes you have a client that wants something right away, then mm -hmm. it's better for them to ship 
directly, and it takes a day to get there. What percentage of the products are customized versus standard products? Okay, right now I would say uh, maybe about 45 customized and the rest, like 55, we just uh, buy off from what we got. So it's pretty close, yeah. you know? Yeah, so it's pretty close. So that's why uh, I feel like it's getting uh, stronger and stronger in the customized part. Before you said, oh, 20%, and then whatever we have, we just sell right off the back. Yeah. But now it's more like customized. Because mm. a lot of Japanese people in, in Japan don't get this privilege where to meet an artist mm. and then to kind of like envision what they want to make and then, you know, to be able to actually can express that in the piece of jewelry. Uh, if they go to the department store or any of the uh, vendors in, in Japan, they already have a template. So you just have pretty much have to uh, follow what the template is in, given to you. Okay, we're going to take a quick break on exporting from Hawaii. We'll be back with Tom and Hanai right after this short break. Thank you. Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. You can catch me every Wednesday, live at 5. I'll see you there. Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where Every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Exporting from Hawaii. We're here with Tom and Hanai from Lahana Jewelry here in Honolulu. And we are talking about their wonderful products that they make and how they export to Japan. Uh, and, and elsewhere. Are there other markets? Well, I'm thinking maybe like Canada and Australia later, mm -hmm. you know, in the future. So. But clearly Japan is your Japan priority. Is, market. Yes, Japan is probably my priority right now. Um, I have seen you at various trade shows in Japan. Uh, what are some of the trade shows you've gone to? Well, we went to TIG, right? Tokyo Part International yes, Gift yes. Show. And then also... Uh, Aloha Tokyo now, and also Nagoya Show, Hula Festival. Uh, and then uh, we just got accepted into one of the department in Nagoya to do the show, Hawaiian show too, in the, I think so. Um, and you've been to the Hankyu? Yes, Hankyu, yes. So, and then also we do some like a Hula uh, show in Osaka. Yeah, so, and then uh, we, we do a like, small little show too, just to test the market, like in a cafe, mm -hmm. Hapuna Cafe. Uh, they was nice enough for, for us to come and display our products and then they, uh, they have their own clientele, you know, come in there. And then, you know, you, you learn a lot and from the customer's idea or what you should do. And, you know, so that helped us a lot for the marketing part of it and what kind of products we need to put in there. Uh, certain region of Japan is, totally different. Yeah. That was the question I was just yeah. going to ask you. Yeah. So can you elaborate on that a bit? What well, price, like Tokyo versus Osaka right, or Nagoya, right. what, what's so, different? The difference is Tokyo is like, they, they, they want something more like modern, you know, something different. Um, and it's not about the price point. It's pretty much about what uniqueness you have right, in Tokyo, you know. So uh, in Osaka, uh, the thing is, you need to tell the story. What, why do you make this piece? You know, so, and they are more frugal too. Uh, they, they like certain fashion, but they need to get something that remind, remind them of when they come to Hawaii. Like certain thing that remind them, oh, we was in, you know, Hawaii and we was doing this and then this. This so is a piece of... Yeah. yeah, yes, yes. So that's, that's thing in Osaka. Uh, in Nagoya, I mean, that's a tough market. I mean, they, people there are so frugal. Um, they, 
want to have a quality piece, but yet they don't want to spend that much money. Sure. Until they learn about your skills and your work, your credential, before they purchase it. Sometimes, some customer comes like six times, back and forth, back and forth. You know, I think if you can actually do business in Nagoya, you can do yes. business anywhere in the world. Mm, that's, that's how, true. yes, that's how different. Do you have customers in Japan who have never been to Hawaii? Or, yes. or does it help that they have been to Hawaii? Uh, it would help. It would be more helpful. It would be more easy to close the deal. But uh, some of these people haven't been to Hawaii. And then you have to persuade them or show them or kind of give them an idea of what this work is all about. And uh, for me, I think the best thing for me was to demo, right? So to show them, like, this is a hand done and it's not something that mass produce you know so it takes time to make one piece so that's what helped me a lot when i in nagoya so but i guess once you can pass it Nagoya, you can pass it anywhere but telling the story again I, I harp on this subject because i think it's really important getting the story into the product is extremely important and hanai san does a very good job of yeah. explaining it like like he, uh, Tom just mentioned, like uh, Japan doesn't get the privilege of getting into the touching the jewelry itself, wearing it, feeling it, it online or picked a catalog. That's touched. So they what they do is they research. They love the history of Hawaii. They 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 have this mesmerized feeling towards Hawaii. And then they do study about the history, the background, the queens, what they were wearing, why this got into Hawaii. They go there. And then what Tom brought in is that the authenticity that when Queen Kapiolani, Princess Liliuokalani, when they first got this gift from Victoria, Queen Victoria, that it was so beautiful. They wanted to give it as a present. And then that's how it spread out. But then this, that he, what I thought that he could articulate his art and his craftsmanship, his skill is all goes in there just like it was how the queens and the princesses was just mes mesmerized. Right. right. That's why. Yeah. Oh, I agree completely. Mm -hmm. And again, getting the story into the silver, into the gold, is such a fantastic marketing tool you know i bet some of these customers can't control themselves they just uh, will take it <laughs> we'll take it all you know once they see it in person mm -hmm. that's great um let's talk about shipping for a second because a lot of the companies we talk to they have a difficult time with shipping to foreign markets shipping to japan for example uh it's expensive yes. and quantities can be complicated in the jewelry business do you have these kinds of issues with shipping yes we do because i think uh everything has to go through custom uh the shipping part depends on what company you're using uh we're trying to use black cat but it's super yeah, expensive yeah. yeah and they're very um uh how would i say it is uh they, they, they're really nitpicking every single thing. Like, you know, you, you need to come up with a scientific name for yeah. thing like we don't, well, this is silver, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. And then, because sometimes I try to kind of like send some gift box, like the one you see here, right? And then even this, I have to write everything down, you know, what it's for and where it's made out from. And um, with that, normally when you send it to those kind of a uh, private company, it tends to get stopped, and then it can be very expensive. Mm. Um, it's hurting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. It's hurting. Also, yeah. what it's nice about Tom is sometimes I'm surprised that, are you sure you're going to keep this price this low compared to the competition out there who make all these Hawaiian jewelries? Mm. He just tends to bring it down. So he'll reach all these people who want it and mm. who wants the true beauty on their, you know, as a gift or for themselves. But all this... Um, that tax and all this adds <laughs> up and, and then he has to put that on. That's the hurting part of us too, of Ooh. course. Just not the money, but it just hurts that when we want to render and give all this beauty to the people out there, 
over the seas. Yeah. yeah. So I think the best shipping is USPS. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so far. The flat rate. Flat rate. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I think that. But even that, you're gonna get stopped. It's mm -hmm. just a We we have some snag now and then, like. Uh, I don't know. The, the, I feel like the policy when you're trying to ask the people here and you're trying to uh, cope with the custom in Japan, sometimes it's not like in the same level. Yeah. So one person has said something like, "Okay, you're gonna follow this policy," and by the time you get to Japan, it's like out of window. The policy changes. Changes. Yeah. So we have to like adapt every single time, and we're trying to, you know. So they tell us like, "Oh, you put a you know like inventory number into the box," and we used to do that, and then like. They still send, tell us, okay, since this is the number, this is how much we're going to charge you, right? So, and then some stuff charging, um, they all charge differently depending on what, uh, what kind of finished product you put in, mm -hmm. you know. It's not like, okay, silver, it's silver, right? So, uh, but because they see the design on top of the silver, then they assume it's like, oh, this is high end. <laughs> so, they want to charge you according mm -hmm. to what the actual piece would be. But so, you don't have to worry about any product being stolen in the shipping process. Well, no, not, in, not, not to Japan. Japan. Yeah. I think when they come back <laughs> here, that's what worry. Uh -huh. That's different. Story. Yeah, so now I don't, now I don't bring back anymore because I don't want them to ship it back to me. I just leave it there and then, okay. yeah, yeah, just keep it there and uh, save me the, the, you know, the, the cost of shipping. Yeah. I think that's the part of doing business in Japan, I think. Uh, because when you come to the custom, even come to the airport, you know, they have to go through all that stuff again and then you guys still have to pay taxes right. coming back, right? Because you cannot use Kanye, we call it, uh, like, sample. Mm -hmm. Whatever goes out, have to come back in, <laughs> you know, so. But, uh, I mean, I would love to know more about that <laughs> shipping Ooh. problem, if, you know, if we can have some expert that I can <laughs> explain things to us. No, it's difficult. Yeah. I, we, we're on... All these, our companies here are just uh, out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and trying to ship product, but it's very complicated. Right. I assume most of your product goes by air. Right. Not by air. Okay. All right, we're going to wrap up this episode of exporting from Hawaii. Uh, can, let's tell people, how do they find Lahana jewelry? How can they order? I know Lahana, L-A-H-A-N-A, -A -A, jewelry.com is one source, but... Where's your office on Bishop? Uh, 1088 Bishop uh, Suite 1205. And they can contact you by telephone, uh, by telephone or email, number, make by email. an appointment? Yes, uh -huh. by telephone number or email. Uh, 386-1359 is my contact number. And the email is under tom at lahanajury.com. T-H-O-M. T-H-O-M. Okay. Also Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Tom, rain or shine, Tom will be out there unless <laughs> the there's a ball game. Oh, a he will, stadium. Yes. yes, and also good now, we just recently started, launched out Etsy. Oh, really? Etsy, yes. uh-huh. Oh, that's good. Online, yeah. Just hit Tom Siravada, he'll come yeah. out on Google, Twitch, or also on the yes. Oh, thank yes. you for bringing that up. I didn't yeah. know you were I also there. demo at the stadium, oh, yes. too, so you, you oh, want to come see a live demo. Yes. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. I wish you nothing but continued success, success and uh, expansion in Japan and beyond with your exporting activities. Thank you. So thank you. Again, this is Rob Hack wrapping up another episode of Exporting from Hawaii. Thanks to Tom Srivata and Hanai Matsuo from Lahana Jewelry. Mahalo. Mahalo.